All right, welcome back to the For You podcast. Today, I got Travi on the podcast. How are you doing today, Travi? I'm doing good, King. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We uh, This was actually, um, this came about because me and Travi, I don't know, probably like we just were talking about, not a lot of people are going to know the era before, like three years ago, we were kind of in the same scene um, where you were leading a couple teams that you know, or teams that I wanted to join and we kind of were in like the same space. So, yep. um, yeah, that's kind of how we, we know each other in a way. Um, and I, I got to ask personally, uh, you led a team called dare rising and you were, were you, were you the lead of director's block? I, I was, yeah. Director's block was my pride and joy. Back yeah. In 2017. <laughs> so were there ever any thoughts if you can remember of picking me up to either of those things potentially i mean you had a unique style to your content something i was looking for to expand into with the dare rising roster and the director's block roster unfortunately we never got to that point because stuff happened but yeah mm-hmm. yeah even now like i've been watching your podcast i mean i know you did one with burger and you're still the unique style is still there it's still there yeah, I, I at least for the approach, and I, I want to get into your approach for content as well, but at least for me, it was, um, I saw a lot of people kind of doing the same thing, and I kind of, because of that, I didn't want to fall under the, the same thing category, uh, right. and that's just kind of how I think about with everything. I think I always thought there was a gap in the market here with podcasts that not a lot of people are doing podcasts with the type of people that I'm interested in. And so I took it into my own hands to do this, um, which, sure. which is, you know, I'm, I'm a lonesome. I'm a, I'm, I'm pretty lone around here, which is hey, nice. You have, you know? You're having fun doing it and you're passionate about it, man. Yeah. So why not? I, as you can see, I got my myth gaming Jersey back here. Hey, <laughs> dark. I wish I had my beer Jersey still. <laughs> I don't know where it is. But... Dark times, but they're, they're a part of me. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> As I said, my approach to content, is there anything unique about the way that you like to approach it? Or is there, uh, well, or go ahead, go ahead. No, I'll I'll let you go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Uh, First, start off with like, what's, what's a process? Cause you, you obviously live, um, kind of a percentage, uh, a large percentage on TikTok, And, um, so what's a process like? Uh, from start to finish for a TikTok for you, like where where do ideas come from, and stuff like that. Typically, if I see pop sounds that I like, typically mm-hmm. the SpongeBob sounds, my favorite cartoons and everything, or you see sounds on the For You page. So with my content, let me just kind of backtrack a bit. My content, how I first started off with TikTok content was lip syncing, and with lip syncing, I mean anyone can really do it you yeah. gotta have timing and everything i wouldn't yeah. even say like my timing's like always there but most of the time it's there uh, i kind of get called out sometimes but i have fun doing it but as far as lip syncing goes oh sorry as far as lip syncing goes what con- for content for that for me i'll find a sound i like if there's someone i want to collab with i'll reach out to that person or persons multiple people and if there's something i want them to do a specific part i want them to record i'll ask them to record that part and i'll record my part typically for tiktoks like that a good five to ten minutes and i have fun doing them i get the most laughs doing lip syncing content for on tiktok than probably i don't know anything i've done so far on, on the platform yeah and yeah it's just a fun time overall because i'm able to do it at my own pace i don't have to really depend on anyone or mm-hmm. unless i want to collab with them but it's something i enjoy doing because every piece of content that i create it's something similar yet different as a different experience mm-hmm so that's what I like about it. Yeah. The use of different sounds, which is a great feature you utilize with TikTok app. I think the thing that I like about TikTok rather than other platforms is like, yeah, I do try to put maximum effort and make it a good TikTok, you know, but it, it still, no matter how much effort you put in, doesn't take as long as other platforms. Um, I mean, it, it could take you a while, but at the end of the day, you're only putting out maximum 60 second clips and it's it's really it's it's a good way to express kind of you know the short form aspect of of content and it's super nice to be able 
it's like almost instant feedback as well you know right um so that it like it's rewarding in those types of ways which is really cool um but like i said before we um how we met and stuff you grew up kind of is your would you say your start is in kind of the call of duty uh scene is that correct? oh 100 percent, 100 i started back in middle school how old was i like 12 13 it's like 2011 2012 is when i started a back very, during the very long time days. yeah yeah i was never good at i was never good at any of that but i just enjoyed watching it i enjoyed trying it and just the shared interest with other people just kind of reeled me in so you were did you primarily like lead and like manage stuff is that mainly management what leading didn't happen until like 2013 2014 but i feel like for me i'm better managing than like leading so i'm more of like the person who if someone tells me to do something or execute something i'm better at getting it done yeah than being the person to come up with the ideas you like to be a creative person but as far as like leading people it's never easy uh i mean i've ran director's block for those of you guys that are watching this i've ran dare rising to a point and then i got switched over to management and management for me you focus on different roles within the organization and it's so much more specific but if you're interested in that area it's a lot more i just you say it's fun it was funner for me at least it was more fun um and more enjoyable rather than having to kind of stress because leading a full organization even though you're surrounded with other people it can be stressful it can definitely be overwhelming at times um and and what aspects is it did things that you did before in management and leading did any of that set you up um kind of for what you're doing now in any way definitely um so with dare rising i mean i, I worked with l7 or lucky seven i've worked with obey alliance as well being able to work with other creators you get exposed to different types of content different types of personalities I never imagined myself to be a personality. I never saw myself once. I always thought I would be the person managing the personalities or being more behind the scenes. But then when TikTok came along and I was introduced to TikTok because of Tanzer, um, which Dare Tanzer, mm -hmm. a lot of you guys probably know who he is. Um, it was just something that caught my eye because it was something, although it was like every other platform that came before, it was something different and special about TikTok. It was something that caught my eye and it made me feel motivated to want to push out content, want to be that personality that I never thought I could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I figured I didn't want to assume that like the aspect of being around people who are doing that and being, you know, like you said, exposed to different forms of content. And then um, and then when did Tanzer get on TikTok before you? Yeah, there there he was on. Uh, Oh my god. Last year, like close to summertime, like around the summer of last year. So he they he's been on it for quite some time. Um and it's something before uh, I'll just kind of go into this a little bit. Before Day Rising ended, um Day Rising had picked up a group of TikTok readers. We had Bryson, Brooke, and uh Teal Lemon as well as shoot I think it was shooter, I wanna say. Was it Shooter? Yeah, I think it was. Um, and they were TikTok creators. And just seeing, like, their different content and their personalities, it was just kind of motivating. Because I wasn't creating content at that time. It wasn't until Dare acquired the uh, the new TikTok editions. It was like, oh, shoot, I want to get into this. It's something I think I can get into and enjoy doing. Just seeing how passionate they were and just the community they developed on TikTok. It's something I wanted to have of my own and even mm -hmm. be a part of their community. So yeah uh what is there is there someone who was like uh is there a specific person that was motivating you or is like an inspiration along s i, I kind of like to more so say like an inspiration like a peer that was next to you that was motivating you to create content on tiktok definitely tyla definitely tyla 100 percent um tyla is someone who is a very close friend of mine um, she's someone who pushed me because at first I didn't believe I could do it. And so the funny thing is the first I very first idea I did on TikTok was actually her put a finger down gamer edition challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did first. And I seen I did that video and 
it, it was just something about it that was funny just seeing how like my reactions were and just my facial expressions because like with me i don't like i cannot stand listening to my own voice hint which is why i do lip syncing content <laughs> but just seeing like my expressions my face i always just like those comments saying oh your smile your smile makes me so happy or it makes my day and stuff and just seeing my own smile it, it makes me realize like man like i can entertain myself with my own content as well so that's just tyla was a big part of that she motivated me and just you know, inspired me to want to keep pushing not just TikTok, but other platforms as well. Um, and yeah, even Tanzer, Brooke, Bryson, my boy Cortez, like they, they had a really good foundation, a really good support system. And there's a lot of people who believed in me to keep making TikToks. And I honestly, to this day, I'm surprised of how long I stuck with it because I'm known for, or at least I, how I see it is, I start a project. I don't always finish it. But with TikTok, it's something I stuck through and I've been passionate about it. I've met so many incredible people, people because of TikTok. I've had a lot of fun because of it as well. So something I'm eternally grateful for. Yeah. Um, all those, that kind of, that group that was um, in there for a really long time it was one thing that like motivated me to want to be in there. Um, not only that, like the creative uh, people that they had, um, on their roster but just kind of the tight-knit family like yep, i i felt family. that i felt that with uh with myth at one point before a lot of things started to go south in a way um right but that's kind of what motivated me was the the bigger than you know the bigger than life personalities that those guys had and i'm i'm so like it's so fulfilling for me to see people that came from the same place that I did, but are doing incredible things because a lot of the COD community, they have crazy talent and talented people there and that I want to see succeed in, in other aspects as well of life. Yep. And, and I like, um, one of my good friends, Lynn, obey Lynn. He, yep. he is incredibly talented with everything that he does. And like, he's just, he's a great example of someone who can take things to the next level. And yeah, Lynn was incredible back in Dare because he was a part of Dare as well. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people were in Dare. Um, how do you, you, you mainly uh, post content around Fortnite. How, how did that, when did you get into that? And how did that <laughs> stuff come about? Uh, <laughs> so what Fortnite for me i've never been good at it <laughs> um for the game itself though it's been something enjoyable for me even though i faded away from it during when apex legends came out i thought i could go pro in apex so i uh, tried me too that. wow that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> and i went to twitch on and i experienced twitch ride with everyone after competing it if i seen it i just seen the skill level the skill gap i said this is there's no way so i was like all right what type how do i want to shape my content what, what direction do i want to go um and that's when the idea of fortnite came back to me because back when i used to play fortnite it was just a fun time overall especially during the season two three four era of uh chapter one something i enjoyed and i wanted to try to somewhat replicate that even though i know obviously fortnite's not the same game it was two three years ago yeah um it's something i still enjoy it's something i can enjoy with other people it's a free-to-play game i mean a lot of the things are free to play now, but that was like one of the first things that kind of caught my eye at Fortnite. And just the whole concept of building, <laughs> even though I can't build, I'm trash at building. And then the creative mode, being able to host custom games. It was just something that I felt like I, I enjoyed and something that a lot of other people connect with and feel like they had a place to come to. Being my streams, my content, my community basically is what I'm what I'm getting at because I have a lot of younger uh, viewers, a lot of younger supporters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so I push the whole family friendly aspect, but I'm starting to kind of venture into more of the PG-13 range, even though like I don't cuss or I try not to at least. Yeah. Um, it's something that I'm very mindful of just because I have to respect like what their, I'm sure their parents wouldn't be okay with them doing it, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's different for everyone. Um, Aside from that, Fortnite was just kind of... It was fun references. Um, I, uh, I used to work at GameStop. 
And there was a TikTok I had. It was, guess the price and I'll buy it for you. I did it with my coworker. And I gave him nothing but Fortnite items. That TikTok got 5 million views. Wow. And that was one of the first TikToks that popped off for me. And kind of what kickstarted everything and actually motivated me to keep making content. Unfortunately, I don't work at GameStop anymore. As of today, I end up quitting because now I'm with Ghost Gaming full time, basically. Um, but Fortnite is just something that, despite the issues the game may have, it's fun being able to play with people from all around the world, close friends, family members, even. It's a good time, and that, that's how I that's how I see Fortnite. Now, I mean, I played other games as well, but that's just like the main game for me. And as I said, it's just more, it's funny because you can like take the littlest thing. Like for example, I had posted a TikTok where I had called out, what do I say? I said, the scoped AR got vaulted. When in actuality, it didn't, it got vaulted to half its stint, meaning um, they only vaulted two variations of it. They kept the, they kept like the, if you, if you know what Fortnite, if you understand yeah. Fortnite, I'm, I'm assuming they kept the legendary and what's the other one? The gold, I'll call it gold. Let's call it that. Um, but it's just funny. I tilted a lot of people with that, with that video. And so a lot of my Fortnite videos are controversial. I'll mm-hmm. do like controller, controller players versus PC players. It, it, it's just funny. It's, it's a, fu- it's a fun time for me being able to see the controversy and then people attacking me saying that I'm trash at Fortnite. That's why you can't use the weapon or you're a controller player, <laughs> like just stuff like that. But you know, you kind of learn like not to let that stuff get to you. It's not easy though. It's never easy because people can be very critical, especially on TikTok. Yeah. TikTok, honestly, like if you approach it as like, if you actually genuinely approached it as what can I say that's controversial, like that can like really drive a video because like you're you're more inclined to get someone to say something mean or hurtful or whatever the case may be uh and then that you know pushes the video farther uh because of the algorithm obviously it's not going to know that people aren't liking it but people also people don't understand that like they don't understand when they're commenting something mean they're just helping in a way I mean, depending on how you take it. If you actually had that approach and you're okay with that stuff, then yeah. But yeah, there, there, there's some videos where I have that approach, some I don't. It's just a matter of you get the comments where it's like, I don't remember asking your opinion or who asked. You get those smart mm-hmm. comments. It's just funny to see, but man, yeah, Fortnite is uh, something else, especially nowadays. <laughs> what What do you What do you think of or? Because I, I was an avid Fortnite player, just like everyone else. Um, but kind of as everyone got off of it, you know, I didn't really have anyone to play with. And kind of just dispersed my whole friend group did. But wh- what do you think or how do you see it, the current state of it? I enjoy it. Um, except I'm limiting the amount of time I spend on Fortnite now. I've been venturing out and playing other games among us phasmophobia these words called Mm -hmm. and playing that a lot um but fortnite as far as the current state goes that that's something it it depends on what what scene you're looking into you're looking into the more casual players or you're looking into the competitive you know play and whatnot because i know for both sides there's a lot of disagreements things that they don't like and it feels like epic's not responding quick enough and so people are losing interest in the game very quick. Still, still based matchmaking, for example, is just one of the biggest things I can bring up right now. Yeah. No, not a lot of people like it. Some may like it. A lot of people don't like it. Um, and it's unfortunate that you have these game developers that are not necessarily listening to the community, but more so, I feel like they're being held back by somewhat uh, at a higher, you know, yeah. place. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder. And where where's the future for Fortnite? Because it seems like a lot of these games, because it's not really too likely that they're going to come out with, a, you know, a sequel or something or so, like something of that nature. It's really hard for these games like H1, like PUBG, these Battle Royale games that go straight to the point and say like hey this is this is the game and this is what you're getting 
Like there's no like at least with Call of Duty, you know that if this one's bad, you only have a year left till you till you get a new one, and then it'll there's there's a cycle on that. Um, but where where where's the future for that? You know, is, I, I think I think the the thing that with that is like people call Fortnite a dead game. Mm-hmm. It may be declining or dying, but you still have as long as you still have people buying the in-game skins you still have people playing it especially kids yeah like fortnite was meant to be a game for i, I wouldn't even say kids it's it's, it's, it's a game for everyone but yeah. that's kind of like the thing that's kind of like the demographic you kind of figure into that it's what's kind of maintaining the game as far as popularity where people are still talking about it and an aspect because i can tell you like there's people who i follow who i interact with they can't stand Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Like that, they, they, you, they, they, and some of them compete in Fortnite, and they can't stand it. Like they just can't stand the state of the game. But as long as you have people who still have interest in the game, that that game's still gonna have exposure, publicity. It might be on the decline right now, and who knows? Maybe Fortnite may get out of the hole that they're in. But yeah, how it's looking right now, it's unrealistic. But I think the mar. How I'll say this: the Marvel collab for this season was definitely something that i did not expect i mean it was hinted but the fact that fortnite did this and now that it's can fortnite is canon in the marvel comic universe that's insane that is insane yeah i never expected a game to do like to go that route and they also had collab with dc they had collab with what jordan they had the travis Scott concert they had they fortnite kind of i would say fortnite kind of revolutionized a lot of the stuff a lot of the end game events a lot of this collab collaboration between these game companies and brands. Yeah, I, I saw. I always view it, and it's a, it's a smart move. You have people who are going to buy into it, and as long as you have people who buy into it, the game's still going to be have some sort of, uh, you know, exposure and publicity. We can we can talk a little bit about what Fortnite actually gave, like the whole gaming scene. It gave, in my eyes, the way that I see it, it gave a more mainstream like not everyone who plays video games or whatever is you know a loser like you know now everyone has a game system they play some sort of game it seems like maybe it was just them being like yeah now i play like or or they actually just got into it because of fortnite um but they it also gave us our first gaming superstar like we we never had one guy that was just like the guy maybe in like our little tight-knit call of duty scene like you know we had like scump or nade shot or someone like that in like the the competitive scene but we never had like a a worldwide you know superstar that has an adidas deal that you know has all this stuff on the cover of espn and talk shows like we never had that we never had that publicity at all. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with just the time it was back then. I think people were just starting to catch on as far as like, and I, I talk to people about this all the time, limiting yourself to just one like platform, that being Twitch or YouTube. But yeah. now it's expanding out and marketing yourself, putting yourself out there, not being afraid to take that leap to other platforms and letting people know like, hey, this is who I am. This is my content and that catching. But yeah, it, it's a, it's it's crazy. Like Fortnite, what the opportunities Fortnite has brought, um, despite the states in now, it's incredible. I don't, as you said, I don't think any other team has done that as far as like the superstar status mm-hmm. for a lot of for a lot of these creators, top creators and streamers. Even like the smaller ones, like you're still getting exposure from Fortnite. Like I've noticed it. I have friends who are hopping on TikTok doing Fortnite videos and whatnot, and they're they're getting exposure off of their uh, videos as well. Um, it's crazy. It's it's incredible. Do you do you think or did you at least notice um any sort of correlation with people staying home and how if your stuff did better is that when you kind of started to shoot up a little bit at all as far as like my content production you could say or, oh, no i mean uh, like num- as- numbers wise okay. like well, okay um that is a really good question. So that's something I've been looking into. I know everyone being back at school now, it's kind of weird because like looking at my analytics and how it is, my growth's been somewhat stagnant. Well, I mean, I'm growing, but it's been somewhat slow. 
Um, yeah. But I can say, like, when the whole pandemic quarantine hit first, there was a high rush of content new creators on TikTok, mm-hmm. and I was one of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I try, and I, I definitely tried to. Well, not, I won't say one of them. I was like, yes, I was ramping up basically, like my content. Mm-hmm. I was trying to put myself out there more. That's when I was just starting to figure out more of like, all right, this is how to trim a video. I didn't know how to trim. I didn't know that you could like um, use the timer. I didn't know how to use the timer in my first few TikToks, in my first month of TikTok. I didn't learn until a month after how to do the timer and stuff. I do everything in app or I back then I do everything in app. Now I do stuff outside of app and in app kind of both. But yeah, I definitely could say that when people didn't have, well, when people were doing like online school or when we're on lockdown and whatnot, yeah, definitely. I did see a boost. I remember going from, Oh my God, 30,000 to 110 K, 120 K. It was, it was ridiculous. And that was like in the matter of two months believe i think mean, it went from march no february or march to like may or june it was ridiculous the growth that i had received that i got and yeah it definitely motivated me to want to keep pumping out more content except like with me as i said um i can be a creative person when i want to be well tiktok it's it's different because i i don't necessarily edit all my own videos i have help with that but i kind of just work with what i have <laughs> That's, yeah. that's why the whole lip syncing worked for me but now i'm starting to experiment more with gaming clips i'm seeing a a lot of success with gaming clips i i know a lot of other people do it especially when you edit outside of tiktok and you actually put time into the editing maybe not like a, hours upon hours maybe you did like 30 minutes an hour on a tiktok like you can see the difference between doing it in app and, and outside of the app you see the quality difference i think that's what tiktok especially your, your goal on TikTok is to entertain. At the end of the day, you want to keep people tied to your that TikTok for as long as they can. You want to have them rewatch it and whatnot. So if it's appealing enough, if, if, if it's interactive enough, where you have like the Ted's pop up on screen or the cool effects and whatnot, not overly done, but if you have all that, then definitely the growth will come flying. And I think that's what worked well for me, you know, especially now, but even back then when I first started seeing that first shoot up. Yeah, I think you said have people rewatch it and rewatch value is, is very important. It's very important for, for growth. Um, and there's just some things that, that you got to kind of ask yourself, like, is this even rewatchable? Like, is there a point to rewatch it? Sometimes, you know, I, I post things that are like, not, there's no point in rewatching it. You, you would get it the first time. Like, it's not that impressive. And, I think that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. I mean, I have heard people talk about it, but there's there's a lot of things that people like don't give advice on. Um, what what is something that on on TikTok that maybe you got advice or that someone has given you the advice that has really worked? Uh, I guess the biggest thing for me is that I that I from what I know a hundred percent is. The higher your watch time and the more interaction and engagement you have on your TikTok, the higher chance you have of hitting the for you page. You also can hit the for you page multiple times, uh, not just one time, but multiple times throughout the course of that TikTok being up. And then also you can have multiple TikToks hit the for you page at the same time as well. So like with me, I used to do even, well, yeah, I used to do like a lot lower watch time videos. I didn't know this until after I got a part of this TikTok group that I'm in on Telegram. And when I got part of that group, they said, yeah, watch time is a big thing. So I started playing around with it. And that's why I say, I say gaming clips has definitely have been very helpful for me. Because for me, my gaming clips are about 20, 30 seconds. I don't like going too long because then people start losing interest. Because the average retention rate, from my understanding, I want to say is 11 seconds, maybe less than that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I think 7 to 11 seconds. I don't remember what they said. But um, you definitely want to be able to loop someone in within the first – yeah, six, seven seconds. Um, to the, if they lose interest there, it's over, basically. <laughs> um, but, yeah, as far as that, uh, the other advice I can say is take advantage of the new TikTok features. They have, like, voiceovers. You have the different covers, like, where you can change your – I don't I don't really use it, but you can change, like, your cover now. I've seen – I know you, you do it on some of yours where yeah. you can, like, have, like, tets on your thing, which is pretty cool. So I wish they would have had that, like, a thumbnail, basically. I wish they would have had that when I first started because then – Man, it, my my page looks so much looks so much cleaner. But um, yeah, taking advantage of the new features, um, 
And then the other thing too is like, don't be afraid to collaborate with people um, because you'd be surprised like what sort of ideas, what sort of content you can get working with that individual, mm -hmm. um, regardless of how big or small they are. Because at the end of the day, I don't think it's gonna matter. Like if I, if I collab with, I don't know, someone big, let's just say that someone, someone large, it wouldn't matter because the way I see it and the way I've noticed TikTok is it's for, Oh my God. How, 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 how did I put it? I put it as it's in favor of the viewer, not the creator, but the viewer, the viewer is the one who's viewing the content. The creator is the one creating the content, but the viewer is the one who's staying hooked on the videos. They're staying hooked on the free page. So you want to be able to tie in that viewer within a certain amount of time, because then if they interact with you, if they like your video, they share your video, they comment on your video, more video, more of your videos will be seen on that, on their free page. And then word of mouth travels fast. Like I've had a lot of people who have said, Hey, my friend told me about you like that. That's all it takes a word of mouth. Yeah. And then just getting that for you page is supposed to, which it's never easy to hit the for you page. It's not impossible, but now, like I said, TikTok is oversaturated with content, which isn't a bad thing. It's just now you kind of have to, compete with not necessarily other creators but yourself and the watch and the algorithm mm -hmm. so that's how that's the best way i can say it. You, you're your biggest you're your biggest competition not everyone else because like <laughs> let's say for example i i don't i don't like why should i care like how many followers you have like mm -hmm. right right i should yeah. focus, be focusing on like ways i can get my content seen by other by m more people you know and that's the biggest thing, like coming out of the college community, I'm sure you remember this. It was somewhat of a competition as well. Mm -hmm. It would, it was somewhat be a competition on who had like the better editing, who had more clout or anything like that. Like, who had more known tokens. <laughs> and you did say that as well. Like on the, it's bought someone. It was like a me. I know people were tweeting about it a few weeks ago, like known tokens and everything, but like TikTok now, like I said, you you are your biggest competition and you want to definitely like compete with yourself. That's why I have fun doing it because I tried to, outdo every TikTok I do, despite it being lip syncing. It might look my content may not be original content. It may not it may not be the best content. But I enjoy doing it. If I can outdo the the previous video I did, I've done my purpose. Like, that's what that's, that's what I want. That's my goal over there. And if I can entertain at least one person, I've done my job. That's what I want to do, you know? Yeah. Do you think a lot of people um who maybe post a TikTok in it and they don't see or they compare themselves to other people um whether it's they thought their video was better and the other one hit the for you and whatever and like oh, do you think 100%. do you think people kind of beat themselves and that's like a a big problem that you see i'll give you a good example me and wacky mm -hmm. i used to do that a lot so i seen how fast wacky was growing mm -hmm. but you have to remember too everyone's tiktok experience is not the same yeah i've learned this i've made another account before and i tried experiment experiment with it posting just gaming clips and see what the growth did i ended up moving back because as i said like you have to find a niche you have to find like a certain content niche that you want to focus with and then stick to it and unfortunately you can't like just straight up venture out like for example if i want to do should I have a lot of people ask me to do the WAP video and post it on TikTok? I'm not going to do that because I know what that will do to my account. That's going to screw my account up because the other thing too is TikTok only pushes, if I remember this correctly, 5 to 10% of your following will only see your TikTok on the free you page, if I remember that correctly. It's, so, it's something ridiculous like that. Like it, it, Your whole following does not see it. So followers on TikTok are virtually useless. What it comes down to is your free you page exposure and, and hidden algorithm. But yeah, I used to be very like, I wouldn't even say comp well, yeah, competitive, but not in the eyes of like jealousy, but more so like, what can I do to make my content better and have the numbers that he has? Now, mind you, Wacky's page is blowing up. He's doing incredible. Berger the same way. I've kind of figured, and this is another piece of advice that you should definitely use too. And this is what I heard from my TikTok group chat, and I've seen it firsthand now just watching them. TikTok has been pushing a lot of more educational style videos. So if you remember, I'm sure you've seen when the Cold War Zombies reveal came out, every, a lot of people made TikToks around it. And those TikToks are what pop. Yeah. A lot of those TikToks pop. Why is that? Well, let's see. If you fit, take this into account, if you have someone who is making like a recap video or like a video covering an update, a news for a new game coming out, 
if you tip if you can keep that person on that video as opposed to going out to another source like Charlie Intel on Twitter or something like that, they stay hooked and more eyes will get on that. You're like the source. And how I view Whacking Burger, they're like mini Charlie Charlie Intels. They're mm-hmm. showing not only just their content, but they're do they're they're showcasing their knowledge of their game. And that's something that I feel like a lot of creators should be doing, even myself. If you're passionate about a game, why not share your knowledge? Why not share what you know about it? But that's something I'm also lacking as well. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel I feel like I kind of understand why that happens so. though. And you can maybe chime in and correct me if I if you think I'm wrong. But most of the time when I like a video on TikTok, and, and my girlfriend does this too, but she's on a completely different algorithm of TikTok where what her for you page, but she always likes stuff to save it. She doesn't l- always, sometimes she likes it because she enjoys the video, but she likes it to save it. And I do the same thing where I'm like, ooh, this is a cool spot that I could go in Warzone or something like that. So I save it. I don't, I, that, and that's my idea of saving it is liking it. So if it's something like the new patch notes or something and you, you want to have that tabbed, have a bookmark on that. Liking it is a very good way, and I feel like th- in that way you you like it, and maybe you and your best friend who play Warzone together, you share, copy link, and send it over to him. Like there's, or you can, or, or you can DM it to yourself as well. Which yeah. that's something I do a lot. <laughs> yeah, like so many different things that just when you said educational, that that all that popped into my mind. Like, oh my gosh, I I'm yeah. literally I'm a product of that. I do that too. There, there's a. I remember when t- there's a fu- not the creator fund but separate from the creator fund. TikTok had put I forgot how much money it was a ton of money into edu- the educational side of TikTok. I'm not 100 percent sure of the co- a correlation there, but I know TikTok pushes more educational videos because I did, said in the Telegram group chat I had there's a oh my god a cosmetic cosmetics uh, TikToker she does like makeup and stuff and that's what it is um, and she has a lot of tutorials makeup tutorials and whatnot and those videos have been popping. I have I have like a a guy who does Bitcoin, like there's a lot of different routes you can go with the educational route, not just gaming. But that's something that TikTok, it, I've noticed, and I and I know that they push is because if TikTok can be that go, to, if you can be that go to source for news, then more that, that there's a chance that more eyes will see your content and that and that aspect of he's knowledgeable, he knows what he's talking about, or he's doing something that's entertaining that's keeping people hooked on that video or yeah. videos, multiple videos. Mm-hmm. That's something watching a birder do well well with. That's something I'm starting. I want to start working on, but I don't 100 percent know if Fortnite is something I want to keep doing. As I said, I'm joining. I'm enjoying other games now, so I'm trying to like kind of split my time between different things and just seeing like, is this what I want to do? Do I want to stick with Fortnite or do I want to experience something else? Like even Warzone was something I brought it brought up. As I said, I am family friendly, but I wouldn't mind going to Warzone and just adjusting a PG-13. It's not like I have to cuss or anything, but just seeing like how much fun war zone is it kind of reminds me of how fortnite was back in the day yeah how much people enjoy it it has that aspect of it and and i compare it a lot to like modern warfare 2 or um just fun game days. yeah just games that brought people together and like people were actually excited to play you have the bigger people who you idolize who are also having fun so it kind of like motivates you like you know when you like you i used to do this and i was really really bad at fortnite but I would sit in bed and I would see Tifu drop like an absurd amount of kills. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to do that. I have to do that right now. And I would go hop on and play. And that's that's how I feel with Warzone. Like sometimes I'm sitting there and I'll see a TikTok or I'll see I'll be watching a stream and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I'm itching to play. And like no and by no means have that has that happened in so long. And and people also like really give the game a lot of like it's you know crap about things and mm-hmm. but it's really it's really better than a lot of people say and it it brought a lot of people together especially with cross platform i think that's a, that's a m- must and you also be insane too you got zombies you got campaign you have warzone you have multiplayer coming to the new call of duty cold war so Hey, War- as long as Warzone gets carried over to every single COD, I'm- Warzone's going to have a place as far as content, as far as streaming goes. It's- there's always going to be mm-hmm. interest with Warzone. Now, I- I'm, not too, I'm not too big into Warzone. I don't know much as far as like how Call of Duty or Activision 
does mm-hmm. things. But as long as they're listening to the community and they're doing what the people want and what the people who are buying these games, who are creating content and enjoying these games want, then everything should be good. But again, I don't know much about the game, so I can't really speak on that. But yeah. just seeing what Fortnite's been doing, it's you don't want to fall into the same trend. Yeah, I do you... Um, me and Berger had a, a conversation about him not wanting to be stuck in a, in a place of one thing. Like you should have your you know niche, but have some room in either direction. Um, do you do you get scared that that is a possibility with Fortnite, or do you feel like you know what's going to happen if you do something and you you're prepared for that? Right, so are you talking about in the, in the idea of like tiktok for like my niche well no i mean like more just an, just like a game, game. like game. content wise yes uh do you think that things will take a hit at all or is that not something that you think will happen i think so i've and i've noticed this too when i play different games even on stream obviously you see people who are losing interest pretty quick we have the people who actually generally want to like know what it is what you're playing yeah but i think when you have a game like fortnite for me i do a lot of uh creative games where i can get everyone involved mm-hmm. and customs and whatnot where like everyone to match making like my own private lobbies and whatnot mm-hmm. i think when you move away from games like that and you start going to more of the limited capacity where only a certain amount of people can play and stuff it makes it very hard to uh maintain that uh oh my god that I guess level of interest, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. um, from not just, just like me. I love playing with people. I love playing with other people. Um, I don't think me playing by myself. There's only certain games I can play by myself. But Fortnite, like, I love playing it with other people. Um, and yeah, I, I do. I do feel scared in, in a sense. Um, like, if I what if I walked away from Fortnite? That's why. That's why I feel like you should. As and as you said with Burger, I'm sure Burger had brought up something along the lines of maybe kind of starting to experiment a little bit as far as like his content as far as like what he's doing on stream and not just limiting himself to just warzone or call of duty model warfare but trying yeah. to experiment with other things as well and that's something i'm starting to do with tiktok i'm starting to do with instagram reels i'm starting to do with all of these other platforms and even twitch um because fortnite as much as i hate to admit it no game's gonna be here forever oh it's, yeah it's gonna, for it's, sure. it's, gonna, it's gonna lose interest um and I feel like there's only you only have a certain amount of time before that game just fades away, loses interest completely, or just dies off. Um, and it's unfortunate, but that's just the truth. I mean, what they shut out, they, they shut off a lot of different servers every year. Like it, it's it's crazy. But I'm not saying Fortnite's gonna end anytime soon. It's just like for me, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, which is Fortnite. Yeah, I feel like if you want to be that well-rounded creator, that well-rounded not just creator but gamer. Um, even though Fortnite may be enjoyable, um, try other things out because you might experience something even better playing something else or even to the same level as playing a game that you enjoy. And same thing with content. Like for me, with my content on TikTok especially, I may center it around I may center some of my content around Fortnite, most of a good chunk of it, but I still do a lot of like generalized general gaming content where it's like as I said, I did console wars. I did PC versus controller players. I've done different things, not just limited to just Fortnite, which is why I think the gate that lip syncing niche is good is good for me, even though it's not something that's original. It's something that's fun for me to do and something I can tie into gaming. So, yeah, I I think it's important to enjoy what you're doing, and I sometimes I felt at least like kind of at the end be before everyone all all the bigger people switched over to warzone sometimes i felt like people were forcing themselves and people can see that at least i can i i feel like it's not as enjoyable um and it's not good for probably for their mental health to force yourself to do something um but it's 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 not good for for content either you know no because then the content starts feeling forced and it starts feeling like a job yeah. And you, I mean, unless you want it to be a job, if you want to actually have fun and have it feel like a hobby, something enjoyable, that's something you don't want to do. That's why I ended up reducing my amount of time I spent on Fortnite. If I hop on Fortnite now, 
I mean, like, my, I'll stream, like, Fortnite twice a week now, probably. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do something else. I, I'm starting to do something else, especially with it being, like, October, the month of Halloween. I want to do, like, scary games. I want to kind of venture out and try different things out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, as you said, it's not. It's definitely not good for your mental health because it gets draining. And it just feels like, man, you feel trapped. And you never want to feel trapped in something that you feel like or something that you're supposed you, that you love or that you love playing or that you're passionate about or that you enjoy. Yeah, I feel like it's really it's really humbling to think why why did you start this, you know? Like if you know why I think that can answer a lot of your questions too. I'm sure there's people who started it for money and got the money. I'm not saying that it's impossible to do, to do that. But you you're more than likely going to set yourself up for failure if the only reason you started this was for the money. Like no one that I know started this for money because there was no money. Like, yeah, when I started, there was like the phase guys living in the New York house, but that was the New York house. Like they still didn't like none of them. Rain didn't even have his R8 yet. Like none of them showed any glimpse of having any money, you know? And I feel like a lot of people start it for the wrong reasons. You know, I get Instagram DMs a lot saying like that all they want to do is just get famous and like <laughs> and get money and it's like i yeah. i don't i don't know anyone who started it for money like the best creators are people who've been here for a long time and were here before money even was a thing right people who are here for the community not just mm -hmm. about themselves but for the people who and i always tell people in my in my community in my stream like i would be nothing without you guys yeah. i would be nothing like your support that's how much their support means to me like for me I create content I stream to put a smile on people's face so they have a place to feel welcome, to feel at home. Because I know, especially nowadays, going through the pandemic, being isolated essentially from mm -hmm. your friends, your family, not being able to like hug people, interact with people. It's just like, it, 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 it's, it's sad, but that's why I want to be able to give them that place where they can have, even if it's only for an hour, two hours or 30 seconds, however long, like, they have like that peace of mind knowing like, Hey, you're welcome here. Like, and whatnot, you're welcome here. And you like, don't feel like you don't have anywhere to go or you don't have anyone to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I had to, man, when I first started out with TikTok, I, even when the whole pandemic hit, I, I was kind of like lost for a little bit too. And I kind of just had to like, I had to have conversations with people who kind of knew me better than I knew myself. And they reassured me, like, we'll get through this. Um, it may, it may take, it may take a while, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be ready to go to the next year's TwitchCon or next TwitchCon, whatever that may happen, the next mm -hmm. gaming event, the next concert that I enjoy, don't, that I want to go to. Like, there's stuff to look forward to. Um, and I feel like, yeah, this, this, this is a period now where, especially for me, like, all my classes are online. I'm basically working from home. Why not make content? Why not stream? Why not why 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 not make a schedule for myself to do the things that I enjoy doing at the pace that I want to do it and not feel like I'm being controlled by other people or being controlled by, you know, having to go out mm -hmm. essentially. Now when things return to normal, that's gonna be a different story. But as of right now, like the grind never stops. It's not a it's not to keep doing it. Yeah. I think looking at it as a a positive or at least some sort of positive manner um you know th th this has it's taken a lot away from things that a lot of people enjoy and um yeah and i uh, it's unfortunate for a lot of people who are graduating who didn't experience prom or anything like that or just to experience like trips and have you know lost loved ones um because of this mm -hmm. um so yeah, I, it's it, it's definitely like a heavy topic to talk about, mm -hmm. but I think the convers you have to have these conversations because then it then it's like, you know, it's we we have something to look forward to on the other side. Yeah, uh, having awesome. a, having a light at the end of the tunnel is is hope, and that's what a lot of people need because when you when you talk to people who who are really struggling with the mental health aspect of of having everything go on outside. Um, most of the time, at least in my experience, I hear a lot of, 
I when I when I reassure that things will return back to normal, uh, sometime, they it's just always a when or something like that. But having that light at the end of the tunnel gives hope and it makes people stronger. You know. Yep. All right, Travi. I I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, having a great talk. I can't wait to see what you do in the future and what the future has in store for you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you. I, I do apologize if I just <laughs> wanted to get on here, no, but good, I'm glad I did. I mean, I've definitely reassured myself that this is something I'm passionate about, being TikTok, being a content creator, being a streamer, and I definitely want to keep doing what I'm doing, but definitely uh, ramp it up a little bit more <laughs> than yeah. I, what I've been doing and just uh, – yeah, like I said, I'm just trying to adjust right now for school and everything. But I know once I get I get settled and everything, I will be 100% good to go, and I'll just keep plowing through. Yeah, I hope to uh, let some things happen and then get you right back on the podcast and see what's what's new with you in a, in a little bit if things change. Um, which, oh, what's up? Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they will. There's there's actually some stuff coming soon. Ooh, I can't I, talk too much about it, but I, I'm I'm not pressing. I'm I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm, I'm super I'm super excited for what what's to come. Um, like I said, this year it's had its ups and downs from like just this whole whole thing with TED Talk, YouTube, and everything. Mm-hmm. It's been incredible just seeing the growth, being able to build a community and meet different people, different uh, people who enjoy my content, who enjoy me as an individual, who I can vibe with. Um, and I'm excited to see what's next. Yeah, it's nice to see a familiar face doing well. Um, not a lot of times do I see people who have been here for a really long time or at least come from the same place uh, or same side of the internet as me. Uh, it's nice to, you know, talk with you and Wacky, um, who, you know, I've, I've been able to, you know, watch a journey of and not just see the end result. So I'm, I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of your content and what you're doing and everything. I'm glad we had this talk. I appreciate it, King. All right. Uh, you can find Travi at, is everything Travi-tastic? Everything but Twitter. Twitter is at Tweets by Travi. But yes, everything is Travi-tastic. And if you guys are watching the video podcast and you made it this far, obviously his links will be in the description. Make sure you guys go check out Travi. Uh, catch him on TikTok and um, Twitch and go follow his tweets very insightful man so i appreciate it this has uh, been the for you podcast i'll see you guys later peace